I, yes, yes, I did get your email. Um, I have the merchandise that you requested. Uh, it's all around me here. Um, it's a good thing that you, it's a good thing that you got a hold of me when you did because I'm actually going to be on vacation. Yes, correct. Well, I haven't taken a vacation in probably three or four years, may even be longer. And so I thought it was high time that I put the uh, game store away for a week, come back refreshed and recharged. Yes. So, you in your email asked me if we had any of those miniature consoles that were all the rage a few years back. And I believe that I have most of them the ones that were released. I don't have any of the ones that were released only in Japan, like the Game Gear mini consoles that Sega released in Japan. I don't have those. And I don't believe I have the Astro, Sega Astrocade or something like that. I don't have that either. I really wanted it, but since it is a Japanese only item, I have no use for it here in the store. Most of the clientele that come in here want everything in English. They don't want to have to figure anything out. And I can't say I blame them. So, you want to start with the older ones first, correct? And then we'll get to the, the ones that have been released in the last couple of years. But I think, if I recall correctly, these were released, I want to say, six, six or seven years ago now. We'll see in the we'll see in the back of the box. Okay. So first up, the one that started it all. We have the NES Classic Edition right here. And as you see, it looks like an NES console, but miniature. Yes, you have the one controller. It comes with one controller. Um, you could have bought separate, a second controller if you wanted separately. Uh, the, I don't believe this opens, I think it's shut, the, the, the game tray door. And as you can see, it comes with 30 classic NES games. So, the NES console, it's a retro blast from the past, with the return of the all-time fan-favorite Nintendo Entertainment System. This mini-sized NES Classic Edition system is packed with 30 pre-installed classic Nintendo Entertainment System games from the 80s, fully loaded and ready to play using the original style NES Classic Controller. And so the games, they come with it. You can see on the back of the box here. Some of these games I never really played as a kid but some of them are all-time classics for me. Like, um, Castlevania, both one and two are on here. Uh, Final Fantasy, where it started at all, the first Final Fantasy game. Mario Brothers. It's interesting, they didn't have Contra on here, but they did have Super C. 
And then the, the three Super Mario Brothers games as well, plus Zelda and Zelda 2. And of course, Punch-Out! Kirby's Adventure and Kid Icarus. So, this is retailing at $79.99. Yeah, it's unfortunately they don't make them anymore, and uh, this is still sealed. It's not a used one. Um, so that's why the price is as high as it is. Yes, we do have the Super NES Classic as well. As you can see right here. So... It's a super retro blast from the past, with the return of the all-time fan favorite, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This mini-sized Super NES Classic Edition system is packed with over 20 pre-installed classic Super Nintendo Entertainment System games from the 90s, fully loaded and ready to play using the original style Super NES Classic controllers. Now, this did come with two controllers, as you can see here. And it also comes with the unreleased Star Fox 2 game. Star Fox 2, the story goes, was set to be released for the Super Nintendo. They ended up just scrapping the game altogether for the most part, never released it because the Nintendo 64 was literally about to come out and they had Star Fox 64 waiting for it. But they still had the game complete, it just never got released and so they released it on this system. Some of the classic games, you obviously have Super Mario World and you have Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, the original Star Fox, and the original Mario Kart, Super Metroid, Castlevania 4, Donkey Kong Country. This system is literally packed with incredible, incredible games. I don't think there's one on here. Well, Kirby's Dream Course may be sort of a throw-in, but you have Final Fantasy 3, you have Kirby Superstar, you have Secret of Mana, Super Metroid, Super Ghosts and Goblins. Or Super Ghouls and Ghosts, excuse me. Yeah, this one is uh, also $79.99. The one thing that you will see here is all of these systems are sealed. The, the one that is not is the PlayStation Classic that we'll get to. So those are the Nintendo systems. The mini console systems. Really? No. I don't I don't know what you just were talking about, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't know about anything about a a Nintendo 64 Mini. Uh, it's been a rumor for years and years, and it's still not come to fruition. So I think I think Nintendo and, and the rumor, the 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 thought process from a lot of people in the industry is. They had nothing coming out before the Switch. They were just in holiday season with no system coming out. The Wii U has been a failure for them. And so they needed to release something. And so they got together and they said, why don't we just create this kind of a thing, price it at 100 bucks, people will buy it left and right. And if they did, Nintendo's no... Very rarely does Nintendo mess up. And so it was in such high demand because they only made a limited amount that they re uh, made more and then re-released the, the console. And then for the next holiday season, they released the Super NES, and that was pretty much it because the Switch was ready to be released. So I, if you have knowledge of an N64 Mini, I'd be curious to, to see or to hear any information you have, but 
It's been a rumor for a few years now, and nothing's come out. If it comes out, I will definitely buy one. I don't know how you couldn't. Plenty of classic games on that system. From Star Fox to Super Mario 64 to the two Zelda games to uh, F-Zero to, um, you know. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff on that system. Some of the racing games like Beetle Adventure Racing. But I don't know if... They'd have the rights to Beetle. I think Rare might have done Banjo-Kazooie. That's a good one. Yeah. Both Banjo and Banjo-Tooie. But those games at this point have been released on so many compilations that unless Nintendo really just wanted to make extra money just because they could, we'll see an N64 Mini, but I really don't think it's going to happen. If anything, my best guess... Before we see an N64 Mini, we'll probably see a GameCube Mini first, if such a thing ever came out. Okay. So, those were the Nintendo ones, and let's get to the Sega Mini consoles. Now, I was really excited. Uh, as, a, as a kid growing up in the gaming world, my first system ever was a Game Boy. But... My second system uh, was actually a Sega Genesis. I always wanted a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo, but my mom got me a Game Boy when I was a kid, and that sufficed. Um, but when the Nintendo 64 came out, I wanted that so bad, but my dad didn't have the money for it. And so uh, for Christmas one year, he gave me, bought me, we went to KB Toys, and I think... The Model 2 Genesis was marked down to like 80 bucks or something like that. And so he bought that for me and I fell in love with Sega. I played that Genesis like there was no tomorrow. And for me and the type of gamer that I was, Sega was more geared for me as a person, as a gamer. Nintendo had a lot of RPGs, a lot of adventure type RPG mix games. Uh, a lot of racing games, but I was more of a sports and a beat em up kind of a guy. And Sega offered that way better than Super Nintendo ever did. Um, even the Madden games that were for both consoles were much better on the Sega Genesis. So here it is, without further ado, let's get to the Sega Genesis Mini. And it says, join the 16-bit revolution so it comes with the model one sega genesis and two controllers this was the 30th anniversary of the genesis it includes 40 legendary games and two bonus titles this is what this looks like here some of these games are classics you got Echo and Mickey's Castle of Illusion, the Sonic games from 1, 2, 3, and Spinball. You know what? I don't think Sonic 3 is actually on here, which is kind of odd. But they do have the first two games and Spinball. Virtua Fighter 2, Vector Man, Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, the first Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, let's see here. Some of the other Fantasy Star, if you like RPGs. Castlevania Bloodlines, Contra Hardcore. Uh, Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which is part of the Sonic universe there. Some of these Shinobi 3. Some of these uh, games were okay, you know, but a lot of them are really, really good. Comic Zone is another one. Yeah, this is uh this will be $69.99. This is actually a little bit cheaper than the Nintendo ones. I think you can find the Sega ones much easier than you can Nintendo. The box is an okay shape, even though it is still sealed. Uh, it's a little bent in some areas, but these come in the protective cases, as you can see. 
So when you purchase here at the store, we make sure that all of our sealed merchandise is um, protected uh, because we and I believe collectors uh, are a different breed and we want to make sure things are as close to pristine as possible. There have been times that I've gone game shopping myself, whether online or in the store, and I'll have the money for a game, but if it doesn't come 97% clean, I don't purchase it. It may be a game that I've been waiting f to buy for years because I couldn't find a copy and then I suddenly do and I say to myself, I just can't buy it. I just can't do it. So, all right. Now, the Model 2, okay, is the Sega Genesis Mini 2. Now, this comes, this was a very, very unique system. Um, the interesting thing is this only came with one control pad, and this was very limited. Not a lot of these came out compared to the first one. Okay, but the cool thing about this mini system is it actually gave you um, Sega CD games and some 32X games, I believe, as well, which was really, really cool that they added those on. Brilliant 16-bit graphics, extensive library of games, and then built-in digital sound and stereo music synthesizer. So I'll show you the back here. Some of the titles. But some of these titles that came with the system, um, Clay Fighter, this is Genesis titles at least, so you have Clay Fighter, you have uh, Outrun, Fantasy Star 2, Restar, Shining Force, Sonic 3D Blast, Streets of Rage 3 is part of this, the second Toe Jam and Earl game, Vector Man 2, Virtual Racing, and then you also had some Sega CD games. You had Echo the Dolphin, both games, Echo and Echo Tides of Time. Final Fight CD was on here. Night Trap, Sonic CD was on here. So over 60 classic games. And then there were some bonus titles as well. Games that uh, were not ever released and were, I think, homebrew sort of. So this is also $69.99 as well. Now, if you want to buy both the Nintendo and the Sega mini consoles, uh, I will give you a deal if you buy all four. Uh, no, no, you got to buy the four to get the deal. Um, so you're looking at $160 and uh, $120 and be $280. You buy all four, you get them for $240. To get forty dollars off. Well, keep in mind, think about it, because we do have some more uh, mini consoles to go through. I think we have three more here, so we'll take a look at them. Okay. All right. The next one we're going to look at is very, very, very. Uh, Sony tried to get into the uh, try to get into the uh, mini console uh, race, if you will, and. Oh boy, did they mess up. Sony got really lazy. And here in the States, they released games on the system that were not even the US releases. They were uh, European releases. And because of the uh, wattage in Europe, different pl plug wattages, uh, the games moved really slow here in the United States. They just didn't work the way they should. So, 
uh, we'll take a look. And also the game list was lackluster. A lot of people were disappointed. And it quickly, I think it got released for like 80 or $90 when it first came out. And then you could find them in bargain bins for 20 bucks. It was bad. And they sold out for $20. Now the one thing that a lot of people said about the system is that you could custom uh, download your own ROMs and just throw them on here, which was cool. It was a cool thing that you could do. But um, this is it. This is the mini PS1. You got the, uh, the one controller and it came with 20 games. But they were not great. They were not the best games they could have picked. And it's a shame that that's how it went down. I mean, if you take a look, Battle Arena Toshinden was the first fighting game, or one of the first fighting games on the system. But Cool Borders 2 was a great snowboarding game. Final Fantasy 7, I mean, what can you say about that that hasn't already been said? But then some of the other games they chose. Intelligent Cube is a great puzzle game, but doesn't need to be on here. Jumping Flash, Mr. Driller. Just very odd, odd. Um, Rainbow Six doesn't need to be on here. Some of the titles that are really good, you got the Final Fantasy VII, and you got Wild Arms is another great RPG, and Tekken 3, but Tekken 3 doesn't move the way it should. It doesn't play. The frame rate's all messed up because it's a European ROM. An American wattage deal. And then Siphon Filter was Sony's answer to Konami's Metal Gear series, which, by the way, Metal Gear Solid is on here. Now, this is a price sticker of $59.99 on it. The reason it's $59.99 is because when I picked this up, I had sold mine uh, in 2020 when I sold most of the stuff here in the store. I almost sold the business. Uh, but then I got out of a situation and I ended up not selling the business and just bought most of my collection back. But uh, I was lacking or missing the Sony mini console. And so I bought this used for myself for $59.99 because at the time, uh, even though they were heavily marked down towards the end, it sort of became a cult classic type of thing to have. And so the prices went back up a little bit. Um, but I'll let you have this for 40 if you want it. It is used. Um, but that'll be $40, okay? All right, the next one is one that I have not played yet. Um, you can see the price sticker. I uh, bought this at GameStop for $110, brand new, when it came out. But it is the Neo Geo Mini. And there are 40 Neo Geo masterpieces on this collection. So, you have all of the Metal Slug games, at least five of them. Um, some of the other stuff you made, King of Fighter games, up to 2002. So you have 95, 97, 98, 2000, and 2002 King of Fighters. Art of Fighting is on here, Fatal Fury Special, Samurai Showdown 2, 4, and 5, World Heroes. Uh, top Players Golf, one of the best golf games ever, is on this system as well. And then Football Frenzy and Super Sidekicks, the soccer games. So yeah, you get one console, um, get some stickers. <coughs> the console looks like this. So everything's just built into this. And I believe you might even be able to hook this into a TV so you can play on the TV. I could be wrong. Um, no, you can't. Okay, just as it comes with a... Well, it says HDMI, so maybe you can. Yeah, maybe you can. 
Please connect the included power supply USB cable. Anyway. So, the Neo Geo uh, Mini will go for 110. I'll just sell it to you for what I bought it. It's brand new and has not been opened yet. Um, but if you want that, you can have it for that price. And then the last one, I never even really knew this system existed. I kind of maybe knew as a kid, but not really. Same thing with Neo Geo. I wasn't privy to that kind of stuff. I want to say my friend's dad had this system. No, he had the 3DO. That's what he had. Okay. So now I didn't know anybody who had this system growing up. But here it is. It is the last mini console that we have. The TurboGrafx-16 Entertainment Super System. But it's the mini. And it comes with some TurboGrafx-16 games as well as some PC Engine games. And it looks like there's 25 Turbo Graphics 16 games, and then there's 32 PC Engine games. It's like uh, it's like 57 games here. You get one controller, an HDMI cable, so. This is what it looks like here on the back. Some of the games, Blazing Lasers is on here. R-Type, the original R-Type. Uh, Space Harrier, Splatterhouse, Ease, Book 1 and 2. Bonk's Revenge is here. New Adventure Island. And then for PC Engine, let's see if I recognize any of the good ones here. Gradius, Fantasy Zone, Salamander, uh, Snatchers on here, Ease as well. I believe the PC Engine is what the Turbo Graphics was called in Japan. So I believe that PC Engine was in uh, Japan. And then it was called the TurboGrafx-16 here. Yeah. So those are the mini consoles that you asked for. What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah, the TurboGrafx-16 mini is $89.99. Yes, $89.90, correct. Okay, can I make a deal on all of these? I probably could. Let's take a look. I offered you $240 uh, for the, uh, or I gave you the option to pay $240 for the Nintendo and Sega together. And then we have the PS, the Turbo Graphics as well, and the Neo Geo. Uh, Neo Geo is 89, Turbo Gra or Neo Geo is 110, Turbo Graphics is 89, so that's basically 200 right there. And then the PlayStation I said was 40. So 240 and 240 is 480. If you want to take all of these, we'll give it to you for 450. So you're saving a total of uh, $70 on what it would normally cost. You got 400 on you. Four hundred, huh? I don't think I can do it. I mean, I can give you four hundred if we take the PlayStation Classic out of the equation. You'll do that? Okay. So 400, you get both Nintendo and Super Nintendo minis. You get the Sega Genesis 1 and 2 mini. You get the TurboGrafx-16 mini and then the Neo Geo mini as well. So six systems, 400, even, 
Stephen. Yeah, that'll work. All right, um, I'm going to get a box for these. You can head on down to the other end of the store where the uh, new Sonic the Hedgehog uh, shelves are being put up to house our entire Sonic collection here in the game store. Yes, right by the Spyro and Mortal Kombat section, that's correct. Well, when I come back from vacation, if you do want to take a look at the Sonic and the Mortal Kombat collection, you're more than welcome. We can browse through it together. I'll set up a specific time. I'll shut the store down. That way I can give you one-on-one -on -one attention, uh, collectors such as yourself. Uh, I don't mind doing that at all. I know most collectors, when they walk into a store, they don't want to be bothered. They're on a mission. They know exactly what they want or what they need what to look for, uh, and then if they need any help, they'll ask. It's very rare. But what we can do is you can browse the store. No other customers will be here to bother you or to uh, get in your way, if you will, or to make a racket. And I'll be by myself over here, and uh, if you need anything, just come to me. Then we can take a look at everything together, and if you have any questions on any of the items, I'll answer them for you. We'll make a deal. Perfect. Okay, well, hey, I appreciate you coming into the store today. Let me box these up, and I'll see you when I'm back from vacation next week. We'll set up a time. Okay. Okay.